early on I got COVID. Uh, I got, I actually came down with my fever the day before they shut Colorado Springs down, which I think was March 16th, 17th, somewhere in there. And I got very sick with COVID. I actually ended up being hospitalized for five days. I did not have to be ventilated. And during that time, uh, something happened to me. And I, I, I guess it was a near death experience, if you will, uh, because I wasn't, my oxygen levels were really low. And I, and I, there was a time that I thought I could just slip away. Mm. I could, this would be easy. And I felt really calm about it. Really. I felt a lot of love surround me. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's tough. Yeah. Um, I just felt this contentment this well-being that I never experienced. And there was a part of my brain that said, no, <laughs> you have three children who will be devastated if you just drift away. And I could have transitioned right out of this world, but I, I decided to transition to stay here. And that, that experience has changed everything. Welcome to Titans of Transition, featuring real life stories, anecdotes, and inspiration about pivotal career moments from leaders who have been there. Join host Joe Miller, former scientist and senior technology leader turned executive coach, as he unpacks transitional moments to help inspire change. Hey, Vivian, welcome to Titans of Transition podcast. Thank you, Joe. It's so good to be here. I'm so happy to finally get together with you. We've had some uh, scheduling issues. Uh, you know, we, we're dealing with that kind of a year anyway, but. Uh, yep. <laughs> I was just going to say the same thing, kind of funky year and. Yep. Yeah, I'm really, <laughs> um, I'm really with, been looking forward to talking to you about your transitions in your career and your life. Um, and uh, it's one of those great privileges to have a, a, a good colleague and friend uh, recommend you to come on to this show. Um, Robert Kittredge, who's a, another John Maxwell team member along with me. And uh, so, yeah, I've been looking forward to this and you've got an interesting background. And uh, so why don't you... Uh, let our listeners know what you're currently doing, and then we'll kind of walk through some of those key transitions that you've had over time. Sure, absolutely. Uh, well, right, I'm, what I'm doing currently is I still have my own real estate brokerage com company, Cobb Real Estate, so I'm a realtor, uh, mostly residential. And that's been a very interesting journey in and of itself during this time. But I've also have another passion, which is public speaking and speaker coach. Uh, so I've been doing a doing some of that. I'd like to do more of that. So I've been working on that as well. So the speaker speaker coach kind of stuff. Are you involved any in any associations or communities around speaker training as well? Absolutely. Uh, I'm a distinguished Toastmaster. I got that this year in 2020, so I'm very proud of that. Uh, and very involved with Toastmasters, just was an area director, uh, taking off a year from the leadership side and, and going back and uh, more heavily into the speaking side. And I have some speaking engagements coming up, so that's very, very exciting. Um, but Toastmasters is my probably biggest involvement. Uh, I do dapple, uh, have gone to the National Speakers Association meetings and that sort of thing, still trying to decide if I'm going to go that route as well. But yeah, yeah. there's not a lot of live meetings right now, but <laughs> no, it's good to have that community. <laughs> and, there. and part of the year, part of 2020 has been transitioning from in from in person stages to digital stages, which is is a little bit of a challenge, especially 
for me because I have a pretty big personality and I come across on stage very, very well. And so trying to fit that into a little box <laughs> on the screen has been kind of challenging, but it's been fun too. So yeah, that's a, that's another yeah. kind of transition. So why don't you tell us a little bit? <laughs> exactly. Sometimes it's a little difficult. You know, I, I usually what I do folks is I, I ask the guests to think about some transitions they want to share. And so mm -hmm. let, let me just step back a second and say, you know, the purpose of this podcast is really to encourage you, encourage the listeners, encourage all of us to be more aware um, of where we are in terms of our life and our career and is it meeting what we feel like our purpose is you know what our vision for our life do we feel like we're on track you know um and sometimes uh, we are in between different roles or in between different jobs uh those kinds of things um or sometimes we we just sense in, in that zone that everything's perfect. We're really jazzed about things. Other times we're like, ah, there's, you know, something's not quite, you, something not quite right. So th these are like what I would call uh, changes or transitions that you're, you're initiating, you're sensing something. And then we get mm -hmm. into those, those transitions. Um, then it's a question of, you know, how do we get clarity around what we're moving towards? How do we, navigate the transition itself. And then once we're past it, we're in a new role or a new situation. You know, how do we optimize that? How do we grow through it? And then there's a whole different class of transitions. And I think, you know, you and I've talked a little bit before we press the record button about um, things being pushed upon us, or I've used the language thrust upon us. And of course, 2020 was a whole thrust upon us year. But yes. I, I think, you know, by way of introduction, <laughs> yeah, so the whole purpose of it is just to help encourage everyone on how to navigate these transitions, you know, for the better mm -hmm. in our lives. So with that introduction, why don't you take us through some of the transitions that you selected today? Absolutely, would love to. I think most of my life, I'm one of those people, I think there are people out there that everything goes really smoothly for them and their transitions, like you said, are ones that they choose. And then there are other people like me <laughs> where the, my transitions in life have been definitely thrust upon me. And the two stories that I'm gonna tell you today are, the first one is a transition that happened to me a little over nine years ago when I lost my husband very suddenly to colon cancer. But not only did I lose my husband, unbeknownst to me at the time, we were in financial dire straits. And I found out most of that after he passed. And he, from diagnosis to death, was three and a half weeks. So it was a very sudden death. But then after that, it was also a, a huge uh, recognition of that he had left sit, uh, the situation not as I expected. So you weren't so aware, Vivian, you weren't aware of the financial situation at the time he passed? No. At all? No. <laughs> uh, I knew I had little hints that things were a little awry, but I was so concerned about his health that I didn't really pry on. Like, he was a very, he was a multimillionaire when I married him. Uh, and we were, we were together 10 years. So it was a second marriage for both of us. And we were married a total of four years, but we had dated for six prior to our marriage. And he always picked up the tab. Uh, when we went out to dinner, didn't matter how many people, if it was two other people or 10 other people, he always picked up the tab and he, he made a comment. Uh, we got invited to dinner and he said, well, I really don't want to go. And I thought it was because he wasn't feeling well, but he made an offhand comment, everybody will expect me to pay. And I thought, well, why can't you pay? <laughs> you know, <laughs> did, it, I, but I never really kind of put the two of them together. So yeah, he kept that from me. So when he died, I found out our house was four months behind and uh, it was in foreclosure. 
I, there were only, there was only $5,000 in his checking account. <laughs> I mean, he had drained everything. And so I lost my house. Uh, I lost my buying power because I had taken out adv cash advances on my credit cards to uh, fund some of his uh, property investments. Uh, so my credit just tanked. So I lost my buying power. I lost my home. I lost my lifestyle. I, I pretty much was financially completely obliterated just overnight. And you I lost your, was... you lost your husband and you also yeah. lost your future financial stability all like overnight. Just like that. And he had stopped payments on his health, on his um, life insurance. So there was no life insurance. I mean, it was, there was nothing. So talk about having a transition thrust on you. Oh, <laughs> and um, so I had to completely rebuild my life from probably below ground. Cause I, and I, and I will talk later about the, the graciousness of having people in your life. I had friends that st stepped up, let me, you know, gave me money, borrowed me money. So I wouldn't be, uh, uh, you know, under a bridge somewhere. So it, it was, it was quite, quite the blow, you know, and, and at the time I was 50, 51 years old. And, you know, at, at that time I thought my life was set. I thought, I thought, and to so, have to just start over from nothing was, was, was interesting. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Did, were you doing anything on the side? I mean, maybe not. I mean, if he supposedly was, well, I had my real estate license no, because I was, he was, he was investing in properties. And so I was, I was able to, uh, handle his transactions and save him commissions and that sort of thing. But he was at the end, he was doing all of his transactions in Florida. Mm. And this was right before 2008 when everything tanked. So I wasn't doing his deals for him, but I would in Florida, I didn't have my license in Florida, but if he did trans transactions in Colorado, I would handle those. So I was dabbling in real estate, uh, doing it part time, but I really didn't have to work. Uh, so what did you what did you do then once all the dust settled, so to speak? I mean, did you leverage having your real estate license and try to associate? Well, thank God I had that. I, I mean, and 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 with any business, any business and especially entrepreneur, I'll tell you, it takes a year or two <laughs> to, you know, get going. I had some contacts. I did. I did some deals. Uh, certainly not enough to to sustain me on a full time basis in the beginning. Uh, but yeah, thank God I had my real estate license, and I just I was working. I was working right away. Um, just dove right in. So you didn't really have any business. And this may be prying, but you didn't really have any time to get angry about the situation. Almost you. Well, it's funny you bring you? that up because <laughs> he left the estate just in just absolute disarray. Uh, in fact, instead of getting to spend the last three weeks with him, I was running around because he didn't have a will. <laughs> I was running around getting his affairs in order. Uh, and so at least we got a will done before he died. And then, yes, I, I had creditors just tons of creditors coming down on me. It took about five years to settle his estate and get the creditors paid off. And you're, you're absolutely right, Joe. It, it wasn't until I got all that chaos out of my life that I could actually start grieving and, and yes, be, be very angry. I was angry during that time, but at least I finally had time to face that anger. But yeah, I was, I was a little pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine so. Goodness. goodness. Now we can laugh about it. <laughs> I was a pretty angry lady for quite a while. Yes. No, I know we're going to surface up some of these after you tell your, sort of your second transition, but I'm just kind of wondering, um, 
for people going through a similar situation, you know, what would you, what would you say to them? Wow. There's, there's so much that I learned from that experience. And I learned how strong I can be, mm. what a strong person I am. I learned that you're going to lose people along the way that you thought would be there for you. And you're going to gain people along the way that you had no idea were going to be there for you. That was probably one of my biggest lessons and to be open to that, to be aware of that, because a lot of times, um, people run because not because they don't love you or because they don't support you, but they, a lot of people just don't know a, what to say. I mean, the devastation was so great. And, and when you think about it, it's kind of the two top biggest fears of people, you know, loss of their spouse or a child or, or any kind of catastrophic loss in their life and, you know, losing mo their money. Yeah. Are, are, am I going to be homeless? I mean, those are the two biggest fears that humans have. So a lot of people just don't know what to say and they just, they just back out of your life because they can't deal with how they feel about it. And so they can't be there for you. And that was, that was like a secondary humongous loss that I had to go through. And I never would have thought of that. Mm. And that took a long time for me to realize and reconcile. So I would really encourage anybody who's going through that sort of thing to, to give those people grace because they really just don't know what to do. They don't know how to be there for you because they don't know how to be there for themselves. And that's their biggest fear that you're, th that you're living, <laughs> you're living their biggest fear. Yeah. I mean, that's and a great it's... point because it's like, you know, you're really, the person going through it is sort of in triage mode, right? It's kind of like the difference right. between, you know, what we're seeing with some of the medical issues today. Um, you know, you have to prioritize and you're dealing with, you know, the base, needs that you have getting covered you don't have time for the other things and so it may from the outside looking in that you would be becoming abrupt or or something like that with others but you're just trying to take care of the most pressing things and then the other side of it is down the road <laughs> yeah like you said five years but down the road even for yourself you're pushing everything out right so you're you're dealing with what you have to deal with. You're, you're kind of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. You're getting scrappy. You're doing whatever you need to do. But then down, down the road, then you start having, maybe expect that you may, if you go through a crisis, and it was a crisis, if you go through a crisis like this, expect that years down the road, there may be a wave coming back. You may have felt you left it in the rearview mirror far behind you. But there's this wave coming back. You said that maybe four or five years later, you then felt like you had some anger. You got really pissed off, right? So it may hit you like that. That's nothing wrong with that. It's just you've had to do what you've had to do in that triage. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's the thing about grief in general. There is no timeline with grief. And that's, uh, that's another big lesson I learned. You know, after the memorial service was over, everybody expects you to just get over it. Well, like you said, there are, there's so many, it's such a complex situation. There are so many things that are involved and it may take you five years. It may take you 20 years to finally start grieving the, the grieving process itself, because you have either stuffed those feelings or, or not dealt with things, or you have been literally too busy. As you said, I was too busy surviving. I was trying to figure out where was I going to live? What was I going to do? I have to start a business. I have to start working. I have to get money on the table. I, it, it's just, uh, there was so much to think about and, and yes, I missed him and I, I grieved him and I wished he was still there and all that, but to really delve into the feelings that I was feeling that that really had to come later after I got out of survival mode. Absolutely true. Yeah. And I like the other points you made about being, understanding or gracious towards others and their reaction towards you, but then also towards yourself. And so mm -hmm. I think those, those are great, some great points. Um, why don't, if you're okay, we can move on because you, you didn't just have one crisis you wanted to point to, you had another one. 
if you're yes. you want to move on to crisis or a transition story yes. thrust upon you number two transitions <laughs> absolutely and that one just happened this past march i was uh early on i got covid uh i got i actually came down with my fever the day before they shut colorado springs down which i think was march 16th 17th somewhere in there and I got very sick with COVID. I actually ended up being hospitalized for five days. I did not have to be ventilated. So I'm very grateful for that because I know that causes some pretty heavy duty complications. But I was on oxygen and I had fever. I had a 102, 103 fever for eight consecutive days. Um, and I've I don't even remember the last time I had a fever and I've, and I've never had the flu. I, I've never been so sick in my life and I got pneumonia and that's what ended me up in the hospital. And during that time, I had a lot of time to think about things because I am one of those people who just goes and goes and goes and goes. I just don't stop, just survive, survive and get it done, go get her. But but that, those eight, eight, actually 12, if you count the days in the hospital or 13 days, I had to stop and, and I was so sick that I could not even watch television. Watching television was more than my brain could handle, that my body could handle. So I really had to go within. That was the only place to go. I couldn't read a book. I couldn't do anything except sleep, cough, <laughs> be really hot, and, and think. And during that time, uh, something happened to me, and I, I, I guess it was a near-death experience, mm. if you will, uh, because I wasn't, my oxygen levels were really low and I, and I, there was a time that I thought I could just slip away. Mm. I could, this would be easy. And I felt really calm about it. Really. I felt a lot of love surround me. Um, yeah, and that's tough. Yeah. Um, I just felt this contentment this well-being that I never experienced. And I've, I've watched some shows about people who have had near-death experience and they describe that feeling, that just incredible love and peace. peace. Yeah. And, I, and I got there. And there was a part of my brain that said, no, <laughs> <laughs> you have three children who will be devastated if you just drift away. Mm. And, and so I kind of, pulled it back in and I visualized a little army and literally with swords and shields and helmets going into my body, these little cells with and fighting the coronavirus. Wow. I, I visualized that. And that was the, that was when I started to kind of turn things around and I, and I could have transitioned right out of this world, mm. but, but I, I decided to transition to stay here. And that, that experience has changed everything. And so 2020 for me has been a, a spiritual journey. It has been a journey about spreading the word that, that love is really what we need to be focused on because that's, that's what I felt so powerfully in that moment. And I thought, okay, love is what, what we can take with us. That is the only thing we, we can, can take. take with us. And so we need to concentrate on that love while we're here. Our love of ourselves, like you said, love for others. And the other thing that it really helped me with was I now have zero fear of dying. I, I just know it's going to be an amazing thing. It's going to be a peaceful, loving transition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I, 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 I never was really afraid of dying, but now I, I zero, zero fear, which is 
really cool because a lot of us fear death uh, or, or the unknown sure. or what, what does that mean? And I don't know if there's anything on the other side. I just know the experience is going to be fantastic <laughs> <laughs> because it, it, it just felt so peaceful. So you, I just want to drill into something there. You said that it's changed everything since then. I mean, um, that's a that's a big statement. I'm just curious what that looks like on a day to day basis. What does that or... look like? That's a great question, Joe. I'm going to answer for you. <laughs> it's changed my perspective. You know how you know the saying, "Don't sm sweat the small stuff." Boy, there is. And I used to be a worrier. I used to be angry. I, I've let so much of that go out of my life, and I realized that that stuff just doesn't really matter. At the, at the end of the day and in the big picture, it just doesn't matter. It, it's, it's more about being the best we can be. And, and so now I have this, this incredible drive to just live my life to its fullest potential. And, and life has just become, so, I mean, it just sounds so trite but it's so true it just it's so precious and i want to make every second of my life count now i don't want to waste my time with people who are who are mean to me or angry or toxic if you will i just i want to embrace everything so i'm 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 really pursuing my my speaking career uh, and making a difference in other people's lives, because I think that's how we we heal is is by helping others. Yeah, well, I, this is really interesting because I think that well, if, if I can be so bold, it seems to me you've connected with your purpose or you've connected with your passion and people throw passion Absolutely. around all the time. You know, they talk about what's your passion? You know, what are you good at? Right. You know, but but I mean, you went through this experience and when you do connect with your your passion, let's let's use that word and your purpose. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about all the stuff that's really on the periphery that you used to try to control for some reason, you know. And right. um, and then you evaluate everything kind of in the with that lens or that filter. And so that's that's informing what you're doing now. So as you're as you're doing your you're speaking, you're still doing real estate, but yep. but um, you're you're also investing more energy and more time. You I imagine have certain topics you like to talk about <laughs> a lot, and oh, yes. <laughs> this all ties into that, right? Do you feel like it's true for was true for you and maybe for a lot of people that? You're really reacting most of the time as you go through the journey of life and, and your career versus Absolutely. Yeah, just kind of curious. And, and I think I think we're not only reacting, but we're we're mostly unconscious and we're and we're just doing what we think is expected of us. Yeah. And, we, and are, we are we are pursuing goals that really, really don't matter. Like, does it really you know what? It, the the saying what is enough right mm -hmm. like my feeling about money has changed my feeling about I, I really love this year of 2020 because globally i i really believe it has helped people reconnect with their families reconnect with their friends realize the importance of connection of human connection you know, we were all buried in our phones and our technology, and now that technology is what is keeping us connected, but it's completely different than what it was doing before. And we're realizing the the absolute importance of our relationships. And that is a gift as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So yeah. yes, uh, totally true. Everything has shifted. And pra like, for instance, I, have, I am selling stuff. I'm selling my furniture. I'm selling all this crap that I have just weighting me down and i i just i'm purging i'm i'm just i'm lightening my my load if you there's will so that i can there. concentrate i'm sorry there's a real freedom there i think yeah cutting and all so that. that i can concentrate on the messages and and changing people's lives through my stories and mm -hmm. inspiring them to to pursue 
thing, their passions and their purpose that they might have been really afraid to before. And, and I want to be out there cheerleading and saying, yes, do it. This is what you should be doing in your life. If, if you've ever had that little voice that said, hmm, you know, there's got to be more to life or, you know, I'm just not quite fulfilled or I, yes, yes. You're, you're right. right. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and just hearing the energy uh, of your voice, um, you know, it reminds me of when I, when I, I coach po folks, sometimes they're just dragging into the conversation because I think they're, they're not connected with what really is their purpose or, or you know, what, yes. There's no passion there and they're wondering why. I mean, it's kind of like I'm doing everything I sum, I'm supposed to be doing and I'm exhausted. Supposed to be doing. A good things, signal, right. I so think a good. I, why am yeah. I not happy? Right. Why I think a I, good indicator yeah. that you're in the right spot is that you feel like it's not work. It's, you know, I could do this 24 seven almost. It energizes me. It's if you feel like what you're mm -hmm. doing, you know, if you're wondering if you're in transition or you should make a shift, if you feel like you're pushing a rock up the hill constantly, that's a good indicator that you're really not in the right spot. I mean, sometimes it can be just hard. There's hard work in anything you do. But if that right. persists over the long haul, then it's a good indicator that you really aren't in the right spot. And uh, just hearing I your voice, agree. it's it's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty cool. So two big stories different kind they both were thrust upon you the second one of course um you found something there so if you were to go back and have here's here's that conversation right it's a it's the lessons part but it's it's kind of like the advice for your 25 year old self or if you could rewind mm -hmm. or if you could speak into the life of someone who is just starting out now that you've gone through these experiences what would be some sort of takeaways or advice you would offer? Oh my goodness. There's so, like I said, there's so <laughs> much, so many it's lessons hard to boil it that down, came out yeah. of all of that. Yeah. But I did call it down to three. <laughs> I think what helped me most was not resisting, uh, not going at like, for instance, uh, the story about my husband and, and, the, and all of that horrific uh, experience for me. But when I finally learned to embrace it and instead of, you know, saying, poor me, oh my God, this happened to me. Yeah, it happened to me. But once I embraced it, really took it in and said, this is happening to me and I can choose to be really angry and blame everything or I can look at my part in it because there was, I should have asked more questions. I should have, you know, there was a lot of things I could have done differently. And once I was able to look at that and then process. So my, mod, my, my motto is embrace and process. If you can embrace it and process your feelings and how you could have done things differently, how you can move forward. So it's kind of a mindset kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is so helpful because if you're resisting the whole time, you're, you're going to go nowhere. <laughs> you're just not going to move forward and moving forward and getting on with your life and getting on through the transition, whatever the transition is, whether it's chosen or thrust upon you is to embrace it and process it. So that would be my number one. That's great. And also to realize that let go of the worry because everything, but well, that's a, an absolute statement and we shouldn't make absolutes, but most of the time <laughs> things work out, whether we worry about them or not, they work out. We figure out a way. So trust in your intuition and your knowledge yeah. and everything that all your tools that you have within you trust in them that and know that it will work out one way or the other and and let go of the preconceived oh it should be this way no be open to whatever it ends up being because like you said when you first started our podcast here you said we we think it's going to be this way and then all of a sudden it's like oh wait a second and and chances are it's going to be better than you imagined and, and that's what i like to 
to proceed in my life. That, yes, I have this hardship or I have this transition, but maybe it's going to actually be better than I thought it would be. And usually it is. So keep that in mind. And then the last thing I'd like to say is keep yourself open to the love and the support that surrounds you. And I say that because we can, we, we are not islands. We are humans need each other. Yeah. We need the connection. If 2020 didn't showed us nothing else, it showed us that we need our connections to each other. So be open to those connections, be open to the people who want to help you, who want to support you, who want to love you. Don't push that away as you're going through your transition, no matter what it is, because people will step up. And if they ask to help you accept their help, because you do need their help to, to be as successful as you can be. So those are the three things I have for you. So the first one was being sort of aware and embracing what was going on. Embracing and processing. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the second one was, what was it again? To know that it will all work it'll out. It will all work out. To not, and not get, I think, not get stuck, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And to not get stuck and weighted down, down in what, what, in what your yeah. vision of it should be. That, that you just are open to, this will work out no matter how it works out. And then the last then one the was the relationship is, side, right? Yes. Yeah. Stay with, uh, stay open to the people who want to help you because the, during the time that I was rebuilding my life and, and to this day, I thank those people who stood by me, helped me anywhere from loaning me money or giving me money to just letting me cry on their shoulder and you know, just being there for me, be, be vulnerable with those people that want to be there for you because you need, you need that support and that love. That's what will get you through. That's awesome. <laughs> so those are great points, Vivian. This has been great. I, I so appreciate you coming on um, the podcast and going, to, these are tough stories to tell. Um, you know, my previous guests, a lot of them are, you know, career oriented, different things they've done. I've had a few that have been this transparent, to be honest with you. And I, I, um, I commend you for being able to, to be, I've uh, been a Brown would be very proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Good. For being very, I, I admire her greatly. <laughs> <laughs> for being very open. Um, so I would like to just say that, um, for those listening in, you know, I know there'll be a lot of people who are, are listening into this and connecting on some on some level to both of these stories. But especially during this time right now, your second story of being near death, but also, you know, having to accept the reality of what a lot of, a lot of people have been going through. Millions of people are going through this right now worldwide and um, very practical advice as well. So again, thank you so much for being on Titans of Transition. Let me ask you this question is is and we can put this in the show notes. But uh, if you're open to people contacting you um, to follow up, if you, you know, if you, they'd be interested in you, uh, maybe giving a talk or just uh, engaging with you on a coaching basis or something like that. Um, how can they reach you? What's Absolutely. the best way? Uh, I, my website is called Vivian Cobb speaking.com. Okay, great. Vivian Cobb speaking.com. And you can go on there and type in your information and I will get an email and I'll be more than happy to uh, reach back out to you. And whether you need to just share your story with somebody who you now think will get it uh, or uh, you want to, you have an event where you think I would be a perfect fit as a speaker. Uh, yeah. And, or you want to be coached uh, as a speaker awesome. or even on your on your own journey, yes, I would be more than happy to reach out and connect with you. Vivian, thank you so much for being on Titans of Transition. I am so happy to have been here. Thank you, Joe, for having me. Everyone, thank you again for, for tuning in. And I, like I said, I will put some additional information about Vivian into the show notes. 
And please, if this has served you, like and subscribe to the podcast. It's available on all audio platforms, all the audio apps, as well as on the YouTube channel, Titans of Transition. Thanks again. Hey, thanks for joining me today on Titans of Transition. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please check the show notes for additional information. Also, please like and subscribe to this channel.